Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. Uh, I wanted to talk in this video about what is a soft fork. A lot of people get confused about the difference between a soft fork and a hard fork. And uh, in this video, hopefully I can explain what the difference is. So a hard fork, um, I've, I've mentioned this before, is a backwards incompatible upgrade. Um, that is, you, everyone has to upgrade their software or else uh, the network gets split. A soft fork is a little bit different. It's backwards compatible. There's extra validation or extra rules that are enforced as a part of a soft fork. Uh, so it can cause sort of a temporary split if, uh, if not everyone uh, you know, agrees to enforce it. And there's a particular type of network splitting transaction or something like that. Um, and it, you know, it basically has to be a malicious actor that causes the network to split in order uh, for a soft fork to actually cause a split. Uh, but more or less, it's the difference between a backwards compatible fork and, and a backwards incompatible fork. That's the difference between a soft and a hard fork. So for example, SegWit was a backwards compatible soft fork, uh, backwards compatible upgrade. That is, everyone that was running the software before uh, didn't have to upgrade. And in fact, many didn't. And as a result, they didn't do the extra validation. Uh, and it, it was possible at a certain point to create a transaction that was part, uh, that, that was um, incompatible with SegWits, but still valid under the old rules. Um, and that's the idea, is, is that you, you do extra validation, so you're, you're tightening it, or um, you're causing people to do more validation if, you want, if they want to check everything. But if you're an older fork, uh, older, older piece of software, then you don't have to. And that's, that's a good thing, because with Bitcoin, everything is voluntary. And if you are running your own node, um, you have the right to run whatever software you want. And if you were running a, uh, a node that was uh, pre uh, prior to SegWit, then you didn't do all of that extra validation. Now, uh, SegWit wasn't the only uh, software. There were lots of other softworks, among others like BIP16 way back in the day, um, that uh, introduced pay to script hash. These are the addresses that start with a three that you might be familiar with. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, SegWit, uh, SegWit, in order to be backwards compatible, utilized pay to script hash. And everything is always sort of backwards compatible with Bitcoin. And that's, that's uh, one of the strengths is that things don't change very much. Whereas with a lot of these altcoins, they will just straight up uh, hard fork, force everybody to do a network upgrade. Now, um, there are pros and cons to this. The pro main pro is that, uh, you know, it's very easy to make upgrades if it doesn't have to be backwards compatible. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a lot easier to write things from scratch than to make it backwards compatible. But um, that is a very centralizing thing. Anytime anyone, uh, you know, is creating a hard, or has a hard fork, um, you know, that they, they have the power more or less. And anything goes in a hard fork. You can, uh, you know, roll back certain transactions or do whatever you want. Um, and, uh, and a lot of these developers do, you know, Ethereum famously, um, you know, paid back everybody for the DAO. Um, uh, and things like that. So you have to be very, very careful uh, with with that use if you have it. And and certainly that's one of the arguments why you know Bitcoin is very different than all of these other coins. It's because Bitcoin's been doing soft forks for a very long time, whereas all of these altcoins they they seem to do like a hard fork every three to six months whenever they feel like it. So. Anyway, hopefully that helps you if it does not or if you have more um, thoughts on this or if you don't understand something, please write a comment in the video or the tweet that I'm going to send. This song is done.